This episode of Rookie Hunter is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation. Become a member, join the Lesson One Club, and attend their annual convention, Sheep Show, Reno, Nevada, in 2020. For more information, go to wildsheepfoundation.org. Welcome to episode 116. This is part two of our 2019 sheep hunt. It is the conclusion of the hunt. Hope you guys enjoyed part one. We'll open it up for questions. So if you guys want to send in questions, you can do so through Instagram or you can send us an email, info at therookiehunter.com. As I said last week, this hunt would not have been possible without the support of the Wild Sheep Foundation. Please consider becoming a member. You can go to wildsheepfoundation.org to get yourself signed up. And make sure, if you're a sheep hunter that has not harvested a ram in North America, you can join the Lesson One Club. Also, big shout out to Sitka Gear. The one piece that I'm going to mention is the Sitka Cloudburst Jacket and Pants. That's the rain gear. It's Gore-Tex. We did not take these pieces off well, pretty much the whole time we were there. We got rain, we got snow, we got hail, and uh, all those alders and stuff that we're smashing through constantly were covered in water so if we did not have this rain gear and if it did not perform so well we would have we would have been soaked for this entire hunt so if you want reliable rain gear that's tough and built for sheep hunting well go check these out you can do so from Sitka gears website or you can head over to ours which is the rookiehunter.com click on the gear tab you can find links to all the stuff that we brought along with us you can also check out some of our recommendations uh, on instagram we did a bit of a recap on on the system that I was wearing and the one that Garrett was wearing. So go check that out. Also, North Arm Knives, head over to northarmknives.com. Get yourself a nice blade. It is hunting season and you need something good out there to bring home some meat. Well, let's get into this episode, guys. Sit back, relax, crack a nice cold Coors banquet, and enjoy part two of our 2019 sheep hunt. part two yeah let's uh give the people what they want to hear they want to hear it so um so we left off uh you guys saw some goat and you're gonna head up this steep mountainside yeah we made it up there and uh about halfway in there um i recorded a little clip um of sort of what we were seeing and and where we're off to so maybe we'll uh we started with the plane in the last one let's start with uh me talking to a microphone by myself while garrett's got the spotter set up and uh, then we'll hop back into the tent and get to the conclusion of this whole thing. And we can chat some more after that. Let's do it. All right. It's uh, just after eight o'clock. We got up about uh, 5.15 and uh, hiked way up on this ridge here. And we've got one nice uh, belly, but he's way up top. So we're going to get the packs back on here in a bit. And uh, start making our way up there. It's probably going to take hour and a half it's like thick alders and shit like that but uh they're on the, the front side of the mountain here it's all just cliff ledges so we got to be sneaky we got to be quiet and uh one good billy in there and it's opening day for goats so it's kind of a fun opportunity uh we saw seven sheep last night and they're actually just across the valley from us so we'll be able to keep an eye on those too. Nothing legal, but something else might move in there. So good spot. It made sense to come back down into the, the main valley here rather than getting way up top. Seems like the animals are all lower down. And uh, we've got a view of every direction here. So it made sense, and I think it was a good call. So we'll turn this thing back on once we get up top and... Hopefully we can get a shot off at one of these guys. It'd be pretty sweet to get one on opening day. When we left that spot, it just started to rain. Oh, yeah. So if you ever h hike through alders when they're soaking wet, <laughs> going up a really steep incline, yeah. not only are you getting soaked, but you're just getting hammered by these alders that are pushing you back, and you're trying to fight through them. 
Oh yeah, that mountain does not want you up there. That's what it feels like. It's like it's just pushing you back. And then it started snowing. We got, I don't know, a ways up there. We stopped and hunkered down for a little while just to get out of that weather. We found some nice big trees there, hung out for a bit. And then made the final push for the top. And holy shit, was it ever nice to get up up there, man, on top of that mountain. Weather was still pretty bad when we got up there, but it was starting to clear off. So we had a pretty good idea of where those goats were going to be. So we came up over the top and uh, peeked down. We could see the two of them uh, still there. And um, we couldn't shoot from where we were. It just it was, it wouldn't work. So we had to go around, circle around, go back down. And then we found like this cliff ledge where we could see them perfectly. And it was, um, by the time we got to where they were kind of in a shooting distance, we were what, 270 yards or something like that? Yeah. Just over that. But um, we also, you found a friggin' ram on the other side of the valley there too. Well, you get up there and it's like kind of like how we went up that other drain. You, you get up on top there and then you got this vista. Like it's. Yeah it's hard not to start trying to glass up everything. Yeah, so yeah. I spotted a three quarter curl ram on the, and just amazing colors. Like you can tell, like compared to the ones we saw on the other, like this one had the dark gray and the, oh, just a cool looking animal. Yeah. And I thought for sure, oh, I, I thought for sure this is going to be a full curl. And then I put my spotting scope on, but it no wasn't luck. full curl. It's still really cool to see. Just kind of, you know, in and out of the alders eating making its way over but yeah. at the same time we were hunting goats so yeah yeah so actually you were doing that i went down and checked out that uh, cliff cliff face and uh, found a wicked spot to to get set up in that and um we could see three of them from over there so i'm assuming that it was that we saw the two we saw the third one on the way up that one moved over and um man i, I looked at uh sort of the photos and what did i say we were there for close to three hours oh yeah it had to have been so we were glassing and waiting and making sure there was no kids and trying to find out if they were if it was a billy or a nanny and it's kind of stressful to be honest man like i was like god damn it because it's it's not illegal to shoot a nanny but they you know they they make it kind of clear that like if you can avoid it to go for a billy so so you and I talked about this for quite a while when we were up there. It was like, okay, what are we going to do here? If it, like, you know, how, how are we feeling? We're like, well, it'd be nice if we could do a billy and a nanny. So we start looking at these three goats. And we figure one of them we weren't sure about. Two, one, there's one big one. Um, we figured that's the billy. We kept looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, looking at its horns and trying to look at the curve. We're like, okay, yeah, that's probably a, a billy. And this other one looks like a nanny. And so does the third one. But the third one was kind of, it was closer to us, but in a spot where if we shot it, it's probably just going to tumble down and not be within reach. And I don't even think we could have hiked to where that one was, to be honest. Like if we came around, even if it just fell down, dead in that spot i don't even think we could get there that was yeah we d finally decided like no that's not a safe call we're, yeah it's gonna end up in that ravine and we're not gonna be able to get it out yeah and uh so three i can't believe that was three hours but that's how long we were sitting there looking at these things for and there's things like you read like like the billies have that gland at the base of their right. horns and then their horns have a a different profile than the nannies do and then I know, like, they'll, they'll say, like, the billy, they're usually more, like, they'll be covered in dirt and their own yeah. urine and stuff like that. And, like, some of these things are, they're really hard to so decipher subtle, through when yeah. you're up there, especially when they're walking in and out of the alders. And I know you're always supposed to be like, well, if you don't know, then don't. But right. when you have an hours looking at them and you're trying to make these calls, like, okay, I, you know, I'm pretty confident that this is what it is and you're discussing it. I mean, me, me and you discuss that over and over, like, okay, well, you know, is, I mean, they're good, clean shots. We can retrieve them. We can, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, 
it feels right you know we've read the regs multiple times this is you know we feel good about this we feel like we're doing the right thing so finally after much debate going back and forth we made a plan and um we decided that you were going to shoot first and we would wait to see if if that goat went down and we would see what the other one did and if it stayed then we would attempt to get two so that was the plan Ready? so you shot at yours it was sort of quartered away you're gonna i think that's what happened right you were gonna try and tuck one in from behind it was standing up and uh the shot was what just a bit high i didn't even actually look at what he went through his went through just the top of his front shoulder and then through his neck right so stood up and then you know i took another shot because i had another shot yeah and it went I down got him, man. dropped yeah it was pretty wild so that was that was good we i was watching it and it just dropped man so we're like okay cool that that is uh, for sure didn't think it rolled very far but we couldn't really tell but we you know we had looked at that area for so long we thought yeah it should be okay not a big deal the other one's still there so i lined up on it took a shot knocked it down good job Damn. and uh we saw that one roll and i'm like oh shit it's like rolling pretty far but um we knew again that there was sort of like a bit of a ring of alder brush there and just kind of hope for the best so I mean, that's got to be the hardest thing when you hunt these animals. They live in such rugged country oh, that... crazy. If you're going to shoot them, like, you just... I mean, all you can afford is just, please, just die right there. Don't yeah. roll down into yeah. that garbage down there. Yeah. So that was... I think that was that was in the back of our mind a lot there, too. Like. Yeah, well, that, that's why I said it was so stressful, man. There's so many things to consider with these goats. It's like, God damn it. And, like, the setup... Like when we branched off, when I looked at you, when you said, I'm going to go down here and mm -hmm. glass, like at first glance, it's like, man, you're crazy. It's like you were walking on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> it's sketchy. It was sketchy. And then yeah. I got over there. I was like, oh man, like I got some pictures of you glassing over that cliff. <laughs> it's right on a cliff. Man. Literally, we had our guns. We're lying down. I had my pack. I rested my gun on my pack and you had enough of uh I had just a perfect little nook there, man. And my barrel was just hanging over the cliff. Literally on the edge of a cliff yeah. looking at these things. Yeah. So, I mean. It wasn't, you couldn't have been, uh, for a better spot to shoot from i felt more confident shooting there than i ever have in my life even from a, like a range or anything i've done man it's not it was just perfect like uh, the gun was not moving anywhere so uh, taking those shots felt really good for both of us i think man we need to pick some landmarks right on that fucking ledge i think that would be fairly easy yeah the one i shot is right by that tree was it not the one you shot's gonna be easy, easy just to find. It's gonna be right down this gully. It's gonna be at the bottom of the valley. When we got down there, there were good shots, but for us to to get to them, we had to go back up to the top of the mountain again, circle around to the front area. It's kind of hard to explain this, but and then getting down to them, I don't. know How many degrees do you think that slope was? Oh, it's man. a bit scary, man. Like you're you're touching out with your hand. Yeah. You're touching the side of the mountain. If you slipped and started rolling, I think you'd be fucked. Oh, you're a goner. Yeah. So it was pretty, pretty sketchy. There was one uh, pine tree that was sort of our reference because, again, it's tough because you're looking from one angle and you, you're coming back down on it from a different angle. So we said, okay, we've got this tree. That's the tree we need to find. And from there we can kind of figure it out. And I actually tied up some uh, flagging tape, some green flagging tape from where we shot from. So we have a reference too, which is kind of a helpful thing to do. Um, if anyone's ever, you know, in this kind of situation, it just get, helps you line up and be like, okay, that's where we were. This is the angle we shot from and, and that. So I think that was probably a good call. So we got to that, that pine tree and we started looking around and I'm like, oh, okay, it looks like something tumbled right here. And then, sure enough, we see some blood, some more blood. There was blood all over the place, actually. And then we followed that down, and sure enough, there's the first goat, which was the one that that I shot. Um, so we're happy. It didn't get too far. Well, actually, that one rolled pretty far, but it got 
caught up in some uh, alders there and, and stayed still. Next thing we did was try and find yours and uh, we didn't see it right away so we were starting to worry a little bit so we went hiked down to where where you shot it and uh, it actually didn't roll that far. No, I didn't go far out. Thank God those alders were there. Yeah, caught it. Um, so it turns out that both of them were nannies. Yours was uh, a pretty nice sized goat for a nanny, man. And I, I can see why we thought that was a billy. At first, it, I was kind of having mixed feelings when I realized that they were both nannies. But as soon as we started breaking down the meat, it's like everything sort of just came full circle. I'm like, man, this is totally incredible. I'm looking at, at the scenery around us and the green grass and the blue sky because the weather changed. and and uh it's just incredible man and, and i'm looking at the meat and i'm looking down at you working on yours and I'm like fuck this is this is why why i hunt you know what i mean we did everything we could to to make this work we worked our asses off and uh it all came together and we did as much as we could to make it a successful hunt and that's all that really matters man you know yeah it, that's what it came down to we it, i mean all that meat we got out of there. I mean, we worked so hard to get up there, and yeah. we spent all that time trying to identify them and make sure we could retrieve them. Yeah, and make sure we were doing the right thing. And then, like you said, once you start, I mean, the back straps, and oh my the God. tenderloins, and you're just like, oh, the meat looks incredible. We haven't eaten any yet, but oh, we will. We will. And I, like I've I've heard this from I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard this from other people like. If you're hunting goat and you get above them, it kind of helps you out, like your odds. Yeah. It's something that they just, when the danger hits, they just seem they to go just, up. they go up. So when we shot the first one, the second one kind of moved up a bit. Yeah. And then they just continually look down. Yeah. As if, as if they're always anticipating. Yeah. Well, oh. that, uh, the third one got even closer to us, man. It got even closer. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it's a coincidence. I don't know. But, I mean, you lined up on that second one and made a perfect shot. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, the fact they, they died within, geez, like what? What would you say? 50 yards of each other? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's pretty wild. Pretty wild. I mean, like you said, even just boning them out up there on that. It's incredible. On that mountain face. Yeah. I can't even put it into words, man. It's just, it was awesome. Coming down was a different story. <laughs> well, we had to make our way because we explained how difficult it was to get down to these goats. We had to get back up and then onto the other side of the mountain into the alders. Um, found some decent uh, goat trails there and that made it easier actually, but we just had to fight with these friggin' holders and shit all the way down and it's steep but and your pack was pretty heavy i kind of oh. felt bad i offered to take some weight off you but it's being you're stubborn just driven to get off of the mountain didn't want to stop so oh i feel like i killed this thing it's my responsibility to yeah but you here. had the spotter and the tripod you had more weight than i did um but it, you know it goes back to that thing about when we were talking about did we pack enough food yeah you know and at that point i hadn't really eaten that much right so I just, and I couldn't think straight. I was up, we were way up high there. I was drinking enough. I was sure I was drinking enough water, but yeah. I was just, I had to eat something. I just think I was low on gas, <laughs> man. Were, I was a hurting unit. <laughs> fucking around with your back. <laughs> Fuck, I was going to lose it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it was comical watching you, man. You're flipping out. You're like, I don't even know what I'm I didn't doing. Even, I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> I was so tired and hungry. Yeah, yeah. By the time we got those goats all boned out and I was trying to figure out how to put in my pack, I was ready to take my pack and chuck it off the mountain. (laughs) But I got it figured out. I calmed down and figured it out, got everything in there and fuck, did that thing weigh a ton. (laughs) Yeah. They were just talking about like meat and how it just, it's like a solid weight. It just feels like lead, 
you know? And you're doing everything you can to get that weight up and centered in the yeah. middle of your pack. And all it wants to do is slump down to the bottom. Yeah. And just reef on your shoulder stacks. Totally. And just fucking your back hard. Yeah. Luckily, uh, my sick of packs got the meat tray and it hugs it right up against your back. So I think I had a benefit over you. Oh, absolutely you did. There, it didn't feel too bad. But again, I had less weight, so... Yeah, I don't know what else to add other than we slogged our way down, man, and... and uh, Back through the alders. And then the shale and everything. I tripped a couple of times, actually slipped on those things, and that could be dangerous, but it wasn't so bad. So we get to the bottom, and we're both completely gassed. Oh. And we're trying to figure out how to sling this meat up into these trees. It's starting to get dark. It's starting to get dark. We only have one rope. We try to put all the meat on one rope and tie this. We <laughs> can't get, get it, it up. The ground. <laughs> we're, so we know we get one up, leave one down. Yeah. And we know we can't leave the other one like that. No. So hike all the way back to camp, get some more rope. We came back with just our rifles, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And got the other uh, bags of meat up there. But, man, we were so tired and just like, uh, I, I don't know, just not functioning properly. Trying to throw a rock up with a rope attached to it. And we just tying shitty knots and it's coming undone. And, oh, my God, all we wanted to do is get back and eat dinner. But we finally got it up there. Headed back to camp. What time did we get dinner made? Like close to 10 or something? Oh, it must like have been that? close to 10. Yeah. And um, we didn't even have a fire that night. We just crashed hard and slept in until 8 or something like that. And then another rough day. Yeah. Like at this point, like my body's hurting. Yeah. Next day, we get all, of course, we strip down, make sure our packs got next to nothing in them, and yep. then we load the meat back up, and it's just same thing. I mean, at least for me, I mean, you had a good system there, but, like... It was tough. Yeah. It was tough. We had to just carry all that stuff back to the lake where we are going to get picked up. Seven-kilometer hike with just the meat. But well worth it. I mean, the struggle of the reward is huge, and I'm glad we did it. And yeah. It, it, you know, it just adds to the story, and I'm glad we did. Yeah. We didn't lose any of the meat. No. We got in those coolers, which were on. Um, those coolers are amazing. We brought the two Yetis, and actually, we brought the 105 and the 65, and we got all of the goat meat into the 105, which was awesome. The ice was still frozen. Uh, yeah, it was great. So, and then the other cooler. We had all kinds of delights, which was beer and chips. So we had some beer and some chips and uh, hung out for a bit. And then we had to hike all the way back to Camp 2, man, which was another seven kilometers back. Yes. I mean, with walking around that, we probably did about 16 kilometers that day. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when we were going back, I was pretty much dragging my leg because I just was a hurting unit. Yeah, I guess that's another thing we should talk about. We both had some injuries on the second and third day of the hunt. I was having some pretty severe knee problems, like biting my jacket, almost puking in so much pain and dragging it. But I don't know, man, just kept going. And then you, I think you have some IT band issues that came up. Um, what was it? What day was that for you here? That was the day we were... Uh Bringing the meat back. Bringing the meat back, yeah. Yep. so. Like, when we finally got back to the main camp, I couldn't even make it from the fire to the tent. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. But the next day, woke up and felt, you know. Yeah, I don't understand how this these injuries kind of come and go. Like, they were crippling for both of us and then gone. I guess you just worked through it. I don't know. But, um, so we got back. This was, that was last night, I guess, that we... Got back to camp two, way back down the valley. We slept in, because we're like, that was the plan. <laughs> we didn't want to do anything. We we're both kind of hurting. Legs were bugging us and that, so we said we we're going to sleep in. We woke up at like 8.30. We we're about to get up, and then the storm rolled in. And it was actually raining all night, too. But we thought we had a break there, and the wind picked up. Holy shit, it got pretty wild for a while, man. Oh, it's a good thing you got this shelter because yeah. I feel safe. 
Like we, we got the Nalo 2 GT and we just went on lockdown and um, we just went back to bed until like 11 and finally the sun came out. And then we put out all our stuff, made a high line. We dried out all our, all our clothes, all our wet, all our yep. wet stuff. And then lo and behold, here comes another wall of shit coming our way, rain. So we <sighs> scrambled hard to put everything away and, and just got everything packed up. And then we just tranchal downpour again. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So we get camp all packed up and then time to head her back to the lake we took our time then because we we knew this hunt was coming to a close and it was a beautiful day for the most part on the way back we got some nice sun and we just stopped and just sat there for a while and in some really nice spots and took it in and took some photos and yeah just tried to absorb the beauty of this place is uh, absolutely i mean like even if we didn't shoot anything, the photos that we got on this trip are, yeah. I mean, just to even backpack through this country, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So we make it back to the lake and we go over and we see the outfitter's cabin and, yeah. you know, check the out what they got and, going on, the horses and yeah. trying to find a place to camp. I mean, it's all marsh around here. It's brutal. So it's kind of all, I mean, there's steep banks coming into the lake because this lake is, it's... I, I would consider it an alpine lake, so yeah. it's not there's not really a beach or flat. It's no. just pretty much straight down to the lake. So Mike had a good idea. He said, well, here's somewhat of a flat spot. Why don't we cut a bunch of boughs up and see if we can level it off? And actually, it turned out pretty damn Fuck, good because this pretty is pretty comfy. comfy yeah. yeah, this might be the best spot we've this had. This is. This is unreal. <laughs> yeah, from what was going to be the worst, it turned out to be pretty damn good. So sometimes you just have to... I don't know, work with what you got, man. There is a grizzly bear working this little road here, working which is hard. I mean, after seeing his tracks there, it, it'll make your hair stand up. It's hard to believe these things get that big, but they do. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, we got the guns in the tent, so, I mean, we keep a clean camp. That's the biggest thing. Our food yeah. is strung up in the trees, and it always is. Yeah. Um, you just do what you can, and you know yeah well, i wish that uh, you guys could hear the horses they've gone up the hillside now but uh they've kind of gone up to where that bear's been hanging around so i'm hoping that they'll just keep that bear out of here would be nice i don't want to deal with that tonight no so yeah man we had some whiskey we made some smokies and oh man it was a good way to f finish things off i'd have to say it was a great way to end the hunt um, we uh, put in a call for a pickup tomorrow. Uh, we haven't heard back. I'm sure we'll hear back in the morning. And uh, I don't know. I'm assuming we got some time to kill, so we'll probably just kind of hang out and enjoy the, the view here because it's pretty awesome. But Let her legs rest. Yeah, I don't feel like doing anything t too ambitious unless we see a full curl ram across the lake. <laughs> and we'll go after it. <laughs> we'll go after it and tell them to hold off on picking us up. But yeah. otherwise, man, this has been a fucking awesome trip, dude. Fucking unreal. Yeah, I can uh, ask for, for a better trip. And the fact that you and I have, you know, grew up together and, and we've done all this. We've been camping as kids and everything like that. It makes it a lot easier you know, we kind of know how we like to work and how we like to set things up and comfort is important to us. And and that's why it's good to have it's the same work ethic and, and doing all the firewood and, you know, getting a flat spot and it's all worth it. So Just making it comfortable, considering yeah. the time frame that we had yeah. when we got in here and what we did with that time. Yeah. It was one hell of a trip. Yeah, man. Yep, so uh, we're still in the less than one club. I'm quite happy to stay in it because that means that we're just going to have to come back. Absolutely. So I guess this was uh, Goat Hunt 2019. We'll come back for Sheep Hunt well, we'll get 2021. Sheep. One day it's going <laughs> to <Yeah>. happen. <laughs> It'll be all the better when it finally happens. Yeah. So. Anyways, man, thanks for a good trip. This journey's not quite over yet, so maybe we'll uh, hop back on here, but if we don't, 
Um, yeah, thanks, buddy. This has been awesome. Yeah, thank you, man. This has been unreal. Yeah, awesome. Cheers, man. Cheers. There it is, Kel. That's awesome. Good times. Success. Success. Yeah. In a whole lot of ways. Yeah. The whole take the goats out of the equation, come home with nothing, complete yeah. success. There's nothing I would really change about what we did or how we approach things or, yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate how you guys were, you know, super thoughtful about what you're doing and that you really put the meat kind of ahead of everything. Like you, you managed to get all that meat out of there. You had coolers for it. You yeah. You strung it up. Like you put extra work in to get it strung up. Like, we worked our asses off, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's really the most important thing. And at the end of the day, that's some awesome meat. You sent me a picture yeah. of kind of a backstrap that you did. It looked epic. It was good. And, yeah. you know. The you, amount of work that you put in yeah. for that, man. Like, it's not like people are just going out and picking off nannies. And I think that, you know, rookie hunter and the whole journey we've been on, there's been so many cases where we've used experiences to learn, right? Exactly. And that's what this yeah. is all about. Yeah. So You got to start somewhere. So, you know, if yeah. we go back and do another goat hunt, Holy shit, did I ever, do I ever have a lot to work off of from this first yeah. hunt? And we did a lot of research for sheep and, and goat and caribou and everything before we went in there. Yeah. But until you're in those situations, it's fucking hard, man. Yeah. Like I say, this is a base for, for uh, other experiences. And, and goat hunting was, holy shit, just one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life, man. Mm -hmm. Just being up there and the challenge of getting there and the terrain that we were surrounded with. I showed you some of the photos that look like, you know, Lord of the Rings. It's like, yep. it's unbelievable. And um, if it wasn't for those goats, we never would have gone up there and never would have experienced that. Yep. And um, we came home with some tremendous meat. Over and over you hear like, oh, goat meat, that's gross. Like those guys stink, They're, you know, whatever. The meat is fine. And I kind of did a test to Ashley and, her, and uh, my brother-in-law were in the house while I was cutting it all up and, they didn't say anything about yeah. it, you know what I mean? Um, and then I cooked up uh, a piece of that was a piece of tenderloin there. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. I just seasoned it with a bit of salt and pepper. Yeah. And uh, it's just like any other venison, really, man. If, <clears throat> if, uh, if someone just put that in front of me, I'd say, oh, yeah, it's deer. Yeah. There is no difference. So, yeah, man, I kind of feel like this Instagram, social media culture kind of plays into this a little bit yeah. because. You know, you just see you just see photos of Boone and Crockett Billies, yeah, yeah. and you just see photos of ten-year-old Rams. Yeah, like that. That turns out to be like that's a successful hunt, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's what we're led to believe is you know you call it a sheep hunt, you go get sheep, you go come home with yeah, a twelve-year-old yeah. ram. Like that's not going to happen all the time. No, no. It goes back to the first part one where we kind of talk about you know altering your plan and well for us like you know, we're willing to take any and, and all of these animals, yeah. not necessarily just for trophy, but just yeah. for like the meat and the experience. So like, it's, it's better for us to be able to shift our, our goal. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, I think that kind of is what happened here. And I don't know, I don't know exactly how to put it into words, but I just feel like that Instagram, that culture kind of, you know, over, it's that whole trophy culture. It's a little bit of, it's all kind of outfitter based. So people are getting these monster mm -hmm. animals because they're going in there with experienced guys that have watched these animals for so long. And it's, it's a little unrealistic in some cases. I don't, I think what I'm trying to say is that that's not always normal to go in there and pull these. Yeah. These bump, yeah. And you don't always out. see the other side of it too. Yeah, exactly. You You're know, only seeing the highs, right? Not everybody's going to post a photo of the white tailed doe that they shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and exactly. like, you know, that first whitetail we got, that's some of the nicest meat that we've ever had. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and that's kind of what we're out there for is, is for the meat and for the experience. And and we got all that and more with this this hunt, man. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, it's kind of cool. We, the um, I should mention that the outfitter up there was awesome. We made an effort to talk to him and, and let him know what our plans were. And uh, he was super open to that. And as long as you, you know, maybe you'll run into some assholes out there, but this guy and, and uh, the guys you had working with him were awesome. So mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, ran up to him uh, on the, I think it was the second or third day when we were way up that drainage going towards that saddle and they were coming up to hunt. So we let him know, you know, what we had seen up there, all the grizzly bears and, and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and said, uh, you know, we're going to head down. We'll leave you guys up here and to do your thing. You know this area better than we do anyway. So you'll probably have more luck. 
and plus they had the horses so they're somewhat limited to hunting those areas and and uh so it's like oh what are you guys going to do and then we told them we were going to go for for goat and uh whatever so everybody was kind of good luck you know take care we'll we'll bump into you again and mm -hmm. and after we ran into them they came crossing down the creek and and uh, he's like how'd you guys do did you get any goats and we're like yeah we got two he's like all oh, right on they're you know <laughs> super excited and uh he was telling us that the he knew that there was a few immature billies up there but nothing monstrous yeah so that was the other thing too it's like well maybe in this situation perhaps it's better to leave some of those billies up there if there's you know we counted at 13 or 15 or something like that maybe it is better to take a couple of nannies i don't really know yeah i mean they they definitely know um what's happening in their yeah, area so for sure. i'm sure if he had an issue with it he would let you know he would have let us know <laughs> yeah but yeah. he was awesome man like i say it's just nice to even though it's kind of intimidating because there's always just like this tension before you yeah. even talk to somebody and then you go talk to him it's like oh okay it's all good yeah well, now we just know where we're going to be and we don't have to worry about stepping on it there's tons of areas we can go it's limited or unlimited you yeah know? it's like so. you hear horror stories of the outfitter resident relationship yeah. but mm -hmm. i kind of feel like you hear stories about going to paris too yeah sometimes you got to be they're in the right mindset or like exactly. approach things the right yep. way and then you get respect yep. right for sure but yeah i'm happy that all worked out too. totally yeah cool so you get these goats you have to deal with them on the side of the cliff how was that it was pretty intense man yeah, yeah. Do, you not, do you have to rope them off or no we dragged um mine was up higher so we actually dragged it down to this little flat spot mm. and laid it out there Garrett's, uh, we were going to try and bring up. There was no way we could drag it up, but it was caught up in these alders, which wasn't ideal for him to to uh, cut it up there. But it was kind. Of, he could situate it in a bit uh, against those alders that they would stay. The the oh, okay. goat would stay put, and uh, it worked out. So cool. Yeah, but hiking down there was sketchy, man, because it's uh, it's like. Phew, yeah crazy slope and if you slip or whatever and you got a, your pack on you'll probably start tumbling and who knows when you're gonna stop yeah so it's pretty gotta scary be super care then going out with a heavy pack we got onto these uh goat trails and followed those we kind of took us back up a little bit but it was safer than trying to cut down and oh yeah and slipping on the wet grass and all that so yeah and then um i guess heading down with all that weight it sounds like you had a, some knee issues um, both you and Garrett, yeah, Garrett well, with the IT band kind of thing. My knee issues actually started on the second and third day. I don't know what's going on. It's still a bit sore actually. And, uh, like of the hunt. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So I think it was the, this first, that first day of, you know, full pack and that, and then, yeah. uh, we were going up, um, on that second day, uh, hiking up to that, that saddle. <laughs> we're jumping over creeks and I think I might have just landed on this mm. thing funny or I don't really know what happened to be I'm going to go to physio this week and get him to have a look at it but I was able to just manage it man and just it sucked but yeah. uh, I'm like what am I going to do I'm not just yeah. going to sit around and do nothing I'm going to keep hiking and maybe it'll uh it's probably not the best approach but maybe it'll sort itself out second day still giving me grief the second day of it being sore or whatever but and yeah. then uh, when we hiked up to do the the goat hunt as difficult as that terrain was, I think it was a change in terrain mm. and it felt totally fine. And um, the next day when we had to hike the meat out after we had got the goats, it felt pretty good. Actually, I could, it's sort of just there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like kind of just, you know, letting you know, it's <laughs> sore. But then Garrett uh, had some IT band issues, I think, yeah. and he started seizing up. And I think part of where that might have come from was the, uh, I got the Sitka mountain hauler there's a nice meat shelf inside of there, right? Mm -hmm. So I put everything in game bags. Um, we had these big uh, clear plastic garbage bags, put all the meat inside of there. It's a huge plastic bag. So I twisted up all the meat, pulled that uh, the, the remaining top of that bag over it again. So I kind of like mm -hmm. double wrapped it. We should all have a couple of those bags because they were super useful. Cool. And, and the, you know, they're big, but they pack down super small. Yeah. Anyway, so I put that inside the meat shelf, tucked it all up and all the there was a lot of weight in the backpack but it was right up against my back so it wasn't too bad garrett's on the other hand all the weight was at the bottom of his pack because you yeah. didn't want to on the kafaru there's a you know the external meat shelf between the bag and the frame yeah. and it just wasn't really working for him to put it in there given the amount of meat that was there i think if you had like a quarter like a hind quarter that you could run through there and have mm. it kind of stick up. Maybe that would work better. Yeah. But anyways, all the meat sailed to the bottom of his bag and it was giving him a hard time. Mm. And I think maybe that's where that IT issue might have started. Yeah. Or it got, you know, 
aggravated even more after all the hiking and stuff we had done with quite a bit of weight. So Yeah, I know what that feels like. I've been dealing with that for yeah. the last year or so. Yeah. Which so, is a big pain in the ass. Yeah, it's a sure. huge pain. We've I'm all feeling sort pretty of good now, but <laughs> that that was what you know. If I had to put one thing, and I mentioned this before, if there's one thing that was stressing me out more than anything else, yeah, more than the plane, more than the grizz, more than like anything that could possibly go wrong, yeah, it was my stupid leg. Yeah. So I feel like this is a big lesson for me too, because not only do you have to train, you know, a year in advance, or you know. Something like that. But I think it's a whole lifestyle thing. Just start now. Yeah. Whatever, like whenever you plan on going sheep hunting, it could be five years from now. Start now for start sure. Start now and just start like living that way yeah. right now because you'll thank yourself for yeah, it later when you sure. don't have to stress about training for it. Yeah. Because what, what I found is once you flick that switch to training mode, that is actually what started, you know, creating all these issues for me because yeah. it wasn't my normal right? Kind of ease into it. Yeah. yeah. So you got to make a new normal. And I th- I advise everybody start that tomorrow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Or keep it going. If you're already there, that's how I, yeah. feel, right? I feel excellent right now. Exactly. Um, I just want to keep it going and continue what I was doing before I left. So yeah, I've taken a few days off just to uh, recuperate and I've been eating like a pig actually since I got back. Just feel yeah. like I'm trying to get back to... <laughs> To did baseline. you weigh yourself before and after no. like we did last time? No, I don't think I would have mo- lost anything to be honest. But okay. Yeah. I don't know why I lost so much last time. Yeah, I don't know. Pound a day basically. Yeah, you lost 10 pounds. Which is crazy. Although we were packing like full 60, 70 pounds every well, day. We were doing it this time too. Yeah. 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 Well, we're. I thought you were planning on leaving stuff. Oh, well, we did, I guess. But okay. yeah, it was sort of similar in that, in, in, in that way. I guess it was those first couple of days really on the last time mm-hmm. we did that really killed us because it yeah. was two long ass days back in those bags around where uh, on this hunt we were like in there within a day and oh, okay. we were able to lighten things up yeah. we kept getting the bags lighter and lighter each time we would move camp yeah. and go out less and less shit we're like don't need this don't need this don't need that mm-hmm. water filter i didn't even use that thing once the whole time we were there yeah yeah i, so I little, think we should listen to jesse yeah, yeah we should more. yeah <laughs> yeah but on, on the fitness side of things man i'm glad i put in all the work that i did because uh, I would wake up and I felt good every single day. I was recovered. Even though nice. my knee was giving me troubles, I think because I had trained so much, I was able to just push past the pain and keep going. Yep. If I hadn't trained, then it might have been a different story. And I didn't come out of this hunt with all the work that we did. Probably one of the most challenging things I've ever done came out of there. I wasn't even sore, which is I think says yeah. a lot other than my knee. But um, felt awesome. Yep. Like I, I could go back out there right now and I would, you know, be ready to rock and roll. Yeah. So I think it's uh, like you said, important that mountain hunting is something you want to do. Get in there. <laughs> Start. That should be your focus all year long. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be strenuous, man. It's like going on every day with your dog, with your pack on. Yeah. Going for a run, doing it, some stuff at the gym, whatever you like to do. Yeah. Just do a little bit every single day, and you'll thank yourself for it. Yeah. You can ramp it up once you get closer to your hunt, but as long as you've been doing something every single day, yeah. big or small. Before you go, you're going to feel good. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to pack 50, 60 pounds all the time, but no, like no. maybe 20 or 30, yeah, just sure. throw that in your pack and yeah. go. Cause that's pretty much your water and mm-hmm. like a little food and maybe yeah. bring your binos and a spotter or yeah. camera just for fun. You're exactly. at 20 pounds already. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Well, uh, so you powered through that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys mentioned that you're really safe with the meat and keeping the, yeah everything clean um you didn't have to wait long at the lake w- weather wise i was actually following Stephen drake because he was out with um connor and those other oh, guys yeah. they were waiting by the lake for i think a few days like we had to wait two days there yeah yeah we had let them know that we were they didn't get our message i guess until the next day this actually frustrated us a little bit because we sent the message the day before it was kind of mm-hmm. early evening and said hey if you guys are ready uh, you can come get us tomorrow. We've got meat, everything. We're kind of, we're good to go. But if you can't, let us know uh, where we'll go hunt around the lake or whatever. So oh. we heard from in the morning. They're like, yeah, we're going to try and get you guys out. We'll give you an update in the afternoon. Just dragged on. We couldn't do fuck all, all right. day long because we were just waiting. So we're like, man, we wish you guys had just said that you weren't coming because we would have went and shot a 
moose or something. There was moose right up behind us. Oh yeah. So that kind of we were frustrated with that situation because like we you just it was really nice to just hang out and sit by the lake. I'm not gonna lie, it was a beautiful day, but yeah, there was part of us that was like, well, if we're here, we're gonna want to hunt. So if you had a chance at a moose, yeah. yeah. Oh, they were, we probably would have got one, man. They were all over the place. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, logistics on the airline or like the pilot side for sure. But um, yeah. yeah, it'd be cool if they would have been like, no, go moose hunt today. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. I just would have rather than been honest and be like, yeah, I don't think we're going to. Yeah. And we just would have said, yeah, fine, cool. We'll pick us up tomorrow. Then. Yeah. But cool. anyways, it was fine, man. And you know, the weather, we got every kind of weather. We got rain, we got hail, we got snow, we got sunshine. Mm-hmm. repeat all constantly always changing man yeah um the uh hilleberg tent was amazing absolutely amazing yeah and you guys got a big storm there a huge storm i wish i yeah. should have recorded some of the the wind because it was just howling up <laughs> the valley man and uh got pretty intense but we're like we just went back to bed it was like peaceful you feel safe <laughs> in this thing right yeah and you can hear all the weather and the wind and it's like it doesn't affect you in there <laughs> at all and uh it dries really quick too so that was a nice thing is we would get these breaks of sunshine and then the thing would totally dry out Hmm. uh there's condensation issues that we're gonna have to figure out there's nothing you can do to get around that it just is what it is it's with every tent yeah so i was using uh i had packed some extra merino bottoms i was just wiping that in the morning before i would just kind of i'd wake up and i'd have them ready and i would just slowly kind of drag them along the top of the tent because if you start moving around, it all just falls and your bag gets wet. And I've heard like of that. guys bringing little blue sponge. sponge. Yeah, that would work well too. We should yeah. probably bring something like that. So so that was the only thing. But again, the, you, you can't, there's nothing you can do about that other yeah. than just, you know, be mindful of it and wipe it before you start moving around too much. Mm-hmm. It holds in a ton of heat, a surprising amount of heat. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's what I was hoping with a four season tent that it'd trap a little mm-hmm. more heat, which yeah. makes sense. So that's cool. Yeah. One, the, actually, uh, somebody asked that on Instagram. Yeah. The last night that we stayed there was the coldest night, actually. We got up and the tent was just like caked in ice. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Cool. And, um, you know, we were, we felt the cold that night. I actually had the vent open in the back. So we, I closed that in the middle of the night because we were like, oh, shit, it's cold. But then when you get up in the morning and you open the door to the vestibule and crack that open, it's like, whoosh, you feel all this cold air you're like wow it's like at least 10 degrees warmer in here it's pretty wild Mm. man sweet yeah so that was that was good the saw was the other thing i had already mentioned that that was key Mm -hmm. i would not go without that thing even though it's a heavier item yeah but to have these raging awesome fires at the end of every day i can't you can't put a value on that man yeah i mean you can definitely do these hunts without some of that comfort but i mean to have big fires to have a little scott or uh whiskey when you get back yeah. and some coolers yeah. and maybe the tp next time yeah. and like to yeah. do all this stuff it's a little extra work but it makes it easier to kind of do the whole yeah. event right yeah that was the next thing i was gonna say is the coolers were yeah like way up there at the top because um we did the dry ice thing i don't know if you knew that yeah you I picked up know. dry ice before yeah. we left i think we put f- over 40 pounds in the the 105 and uh, had we gotten out on time it would have probably lasted a little bit longer but it was sitting in the car in that but um, before we left, I dumped all the dry ice into the smaller cooler, put a bunch of um, uh, bagged cubed ice in the bottom of that one. Mm-hmm. And then I put uh, newspaper on top of that to keep the dry ice away from the the uh, the ice, like the normal ice. Yeah. Because if it touches water, it, it, uh, it uh, you know, dissipates quicker, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, and then dumped the dry ice back on top of that. Filled the other, the the uh, 65 full of ice as well. When we got back after all that hunting stuff like that, frozen solid. <laughs> nice. It's pretty wild, man. Cool. But that dry ice was pretty much gone by the time we got back there. But it mm. kept the rest of the ice nice and cold. So Cool. It was a bit expensive. It was like 100 bucks for uh, all that dry ice, but I think it was worth it. Oh, yeah. I mean, a once-in-a-lifetime hunt, yeah. 100 bucks is yeah, whatever. nothing. Yeah. And it kept all that meat. Like totally cold and oh yeah so yeah so that was worth it. I'm trying to think if there's any other. The rain gear was obviously huge. That we hardly took that off. But yeah, I didn't use the down hoodie that could have come in useful if we had gotten in there when all that snow hit. Yeah, and uh, I didn't use the um, the jet stream. I brought that in too. Jet stream jacket. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna bring my jet stream vest. Yeah, and then the so I was gonna bring 
my base layers, mm-hmm. the mid, mid, um, or what's that? The heavy core hoodie. Yeah. And then I was going to bring my vest and my rain gear. Yeah. And my down hoodie. Yeah. So yeah, I ran, uh, I already went over this, but base layer, mm-hmm. Merino, core, heavyweight hoodie, Calvin lightweight hoodie, which is the puffy yeah. and rain gear. Pretty much didn't take that off. Yeah. Under my uh, rain gear, I just wore the uh, Merino long johns. Yeah. And uh, there was a few days where I wore the, um, the Timberline pants. Yeah. Which that totally makes sense. Like this argument has been going on. Like, should I buy a soft shell jacket or not? Mm-hmm. I feel like soft shells are more for like when you're not doing 10 day backpacks, yeah. when you're going out and like maybe on a day elk hunt or, you know, you're not worried about packing a lot of extra weight. Yeah. But like if you're packing weight and you want to reduce that, it's kind of like, what would you wear if you go ski for the day? You'd have like a base layer, you'd have a mid layer mm-hmm. and then you'd have your shell. Yeah. Throw in like your Calvin light or whatever puffy yeah. you want yeah. too, because you're not skiing on all day, obviously. Yeah. But like you're not packing a soft shell and a shell yeah. when you go ski. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of, the, the Gore-Tex and the rain jacket, like that rain jacket is going to be a good jacket all around. It, yeah. It uh, breaks the wind and it, it keeps yeah. the heat in too if you're cold. So yeah, it's great. So cool. that system worked perfectly. I probably just bring that again next time. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the soft shells are nice, but I, I think there's definitely a purpose for them. The fall hunts around like in the Okanagan, it's a perfect yeah. jacket because we don't get that much rain yeah. around here. And fuck, I hardly took that thing off all fall, winter, spring last year. Yeah. And wore it all the time. Um, but it just, yeah, I didn't need it up there. Now I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're what, one and a half pounds, two pounds? I want to say like seven or 800 grams yeah. for just packing that jet stream yeah. around, right? Yeah. So you, it's more about, not that it's a great jacket, obviously, for, for when you do use it, but to pack that around is just too much. Yeah. Cool. Um, anything else you'd, you know, do differently next time or, um, lessons learned? Um, I don't think so. No? No. Like I really couldn't have gone any better. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I had fun listening to Garrett too. He, he's hilarious. Yeah. He's funny on the, uh, the podcast. <laughs> I'm always, I'm never sure if he's, if he's, uh, going to be into it or not, but he, yeah, he just lights up as soon as you turn that yeah. thing on. It's pretty funny. Nice. So yeah. I think he was in our, the first podcast we ever did. Was he? Yeah. It was before Rookie Hunter. We Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> we did a practice one at your place like <laughs> ten years ago. Forgot about this that. This is like one before I knew what podcasts were, but <laughs> he's actually been involved, I guess you could say yeah, for funny. quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> Be nice to get him out for, for more. Yeah. But um yeah, man, awesome hunt. The uh meat is fantastic. I can't wait to start doing some stuff. I think uh we're gonna do like a a curry or something, you know, let this meat just cook for hours in the oven and oh, yeah. it's going to be good. So I'll nice. have you over for, for one of those. Deal. And uh, I think Garrett's getting some stuff uh, stuff made up too. Cool. So pretty awesome, man. We yeah. missed you like crazy though. So yeah, I might've been able to help out with some of the weight <laughs> yeah. bearing uh, going down that hill. But <laughs> yeah, that was part of it too. Is like when uh, I didn't really change, the only thing I swapped out was the tent. And maybe I would have changed things a little bit had I known you weren't coming a little bit sooner. Yeah. But we were sort of just stuck with the weight that we had thinking there was three guys. So there's yeah. things we probably could have ditched, but I just didn't want to rip my pack apart and start all over again because I knew yeah. what was in there. I didn't want to fuck with anything. So yeah. Anyways. Oh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Putting the pack together for something like that. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. And the timing of everything, like, which I can go into later is just mind blowing, but it's crazy. <laughs> Um, things yeah. happen for a reason though man yeah. maybe you would have gotten eaten by a bear <laughs> <laughs> you know what Brie kind of mentioned to me um, this was probably a couple of days after you guys left she said you know I just really to be honest I didn't have a good feeling about this huh. this hunt for some reason like I, did, I don't know what it is I know you guys are safe and whatever Yeah, and you're right maybe it had something to do more about like me personally could have been being there but um, who knows I mean I, I still think like doing stuff like this, you're doing what you love to do. And if, yeah. st- if something happens then you know, you're yeah, doing what you love to do. Yeah. So it's just like anybody else when you're, whether you're skiing or, you know, doing extreme sports or whatever, it's just, you love being out there. There's a risk around every corner there. Yeah. Even, I mean, there's risk just driving up there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but sitting at home isn't much fun either. No, exactly. Yeah. And it's all about the adventure and the, like for me, I think that, the most important thing about hunting for me is um, the adventure and 
the camaraderie and the stories. Yeah. I mean, meat is obviously up there and there's so many other things, but like, that's kind of why I do it. Yeah. And when I originally agreed to start hunting, it was like, oh, I'd like to go and like, I'll just be the camp chef, right? Yeah. Like, I just want to hang out. Yeah. Like, that's kind of the top of my list. Hang out, but doing cool shit. Yeah. That was my <laughs> thought too, man. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, a little, I uh, wish I could have been there, but uh, um, I'll be on the next one. There'll be lots of opportunities. Yeah. Oh, the other thing, lots of people were saying like, ah, oh, you know, how do you feel about not getting a sheep? I don't give a fuck. I just, I have to go back and do it again. Yeah. So. I don't yeah. care at all, man. We, we, well, we saw sheep, but we didn't see anything yeah. legal. Um, other than, you know, the closest thing was that three quarter curl and that gets your heart pounding. Yeah. And, um, it just means we have to go back and continue to be in the less than one club. And I'm happy to stay there, man. Yeah. We're lucky as BC residents that we could go out and do this again next year if we yeah. wanted to probably be every couple of years, but we're going to always go out there with some options, I think is, is what we, the conclusion we came to so that we can just, you know, yeah do whatever comes in front of us so yeah we're super lucky let's put it that way yeah it was unfortunate the weather hit the way it did because i was i was looking forward to following lander on his trip yeah, which was lined right. up with ours and he didn't make it out and he had like he, like what was his seventh try going something in with like the boat that, six i mean or seven or yeah how special is it going to be when when he gets a sheep yeah. his eighth year which yeah. is you know they always say you'll get sheep eight years after you start yeah or it'll be as old as when you yeah, started right exactly. so yeah um yeah i think i'd rather have it work out that way anyways yeah the more i think about it mm -hmm. i know you're on that page too maybe not eight years i mean a few <laughs> a couple more years from now would be good <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um i also but, want to give a shout out to everybody who is reaching out to us um while we're up there um people were watching pretty closely and, and a lot of friends of the show people we've had on we're trying to help us you know here, here's some options for you guys you can think about this and just being super supportive and trying to help us out. And even from start to finish, man, lots of, yeah. guys, you know, everyone has been great and they want us to succeed out there and, and be safe. And, and, uh, everybody's listened to this, you know, who you are and, and, uh, get good old Jeff Lander is checking in on us while we're out there making sure we're okay. So it's, it's nice, man, knowing that, uh, you got a, a whole whack of people thinking about you looking after you and making sure you're okay out there and, and, uh, you know, making sure you have all the knowledge and help that you need is that goes that's huge it's yeah. massive not a lot of people have that so cool yeah awesome man well i'm excited to uh try right. the meat on some of these wizard yeah. cows yeah and, uh, <laughs> i'm excited to plan the next hunt cow where <laughs> yeah. are we going next i don't know where are we going next have <laughs> we talked about this no i mean i'd like to go bc obviously i love bc yeah go anywhere in bc but maybe we could go somewhere outside of bc yeah. Maybe we can go somewhere outside North America. We could. That's a dream. I'm Just, thinking New Zealand. I'm thinking that too. Let's go there. Okay. I, I made some connections. And D's like oh, did connected you? to New Zealand. Oh, yeah. So. The pilot. Yeah. Cool. Well, what no, there's the, somebody else. There's all kinds of Kiwis up there. Oh, yeah. Just hiding in the bushes there's out there. Just hiding out there. Just pop out. <laughs> hey, mate. <laughs> Sorry if I uh, offended any Kiwis because that probably sounded more Australian. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, there's a lot of Aust Aussies in Kelowna and, um, I'm always surprised at how well they fit in with Canadians. Yeah, for sure. And vice versa. Yeah. We're all the same. We love beer. Like to have a good do. time. Yeah. Actually, you know, I know New Zealanders aren't the same as Aussies. Kiwis and Aussies are totally different, but I, I'd i like to go check it out. Yep. Cool. Well, I guess uh, we'll start planning the next one. Let's do it. I'm going to start training tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> good. I'm going to keep, keep plowing <laughs> forward then. Okay. All right, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. This episode of Rookie Hunter was brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Sitka Gear, and North Arm Knives. As always, it is hosted by Kelly Mulner and myself, Mike Peterson. It is recorded, edited, and produced at Mountain Stream Audio Productions in beautiful Kelowna, British Columbia. Original music written by the one and only Kelly Mulner with help from Graham Ord, Darcy Booth, and Chip Sledermeen. If you want to help us out, there's one thing you can do. You can go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from leave us a five-star rating and a review and don't forget to subscribe for more on the show head over to our website the rookiehunter.com 